Hello, it's Amy Zawi with the Jerusalem Connection Report for Friday, October 14th. This is the Red Alert. Today I want to continue our discussion about the anti-Semitic and BDS movements happening on college campuses, both in America and in Europe. <clears throat> To recap, last week we were discussing the fact that on college campuses, Jewish students are being targeted uh, in addition to a so-called debate on Israeli policies in the Middle East. Fighting anti-Semitism on college campuses is not only good for academic integrity, including issues of tolerance, diversity, and equality, it's actually part of the law. The Anti-Defamation League has a constant stream of very specific incidences that happen on college campuses where Jewish students are targeted, harassed, or bullied, or otherwise intimidated. Moreover, Jewish students are often disqualified or somehow protested against for serving in various governing bodies because they can't so-called be objective on any other issue. Assuming they'd be pro-Zion, they are being claimed to be disqualified. As well, Jewish artists and performers and academics of all different disciplines, whether they're writers or performing artists, are being protested for their visits to college campuses simply because of their Jewishness. And this is especially discriminatory when the topic of discussion or issue at hand has nothing to do with politics or any debate about Israeli policy. David Horowitz recently published on his website just a week or so ago a schematic that showed the direct connection between Hamas, a known terrorist organization, organization whose charter is to remove Israel from the face of the earth, with that of the Palestinian, uh, the Students for Justice in Palestine group, which was founded by the American Muslims for Palestine, which in turn was founded by Hamas leadership here in America. Now, this Students for Justice in Palestine group is deployed all over the United States on college campuses to organize these BDS movements, boycott, divest, sanction, where at the face of it, they came to claim to be protesting policies in Israel that are supposedly harming Palestinians in the region. But the fact of the matter is, is they are targeting Jewish students as well as any other students who support Israel or seem to be pro-Israel in their stance or who simply object to the BDF's activities. And this is met with all sorts of harassment and vandalism and bullying and intimidation on campuses. Jewish students are feeling the pressure because they cannot seem to combat the narrative that is part of the news, part of media headlines, as well as from these student groups, uh, these SJP groups, because they demonize Israel at all fronts, making every ill in the Middle East Israel's fault, and by extension, it must be every Jew's fault worldwide. This, of course, is not the truth, and it is our job to keep disseminating and evangelizing the truth of the nation of Israel and its origin and its historical context. Keep in mind that Israel is the only place in the Middle East where you are protected regardless of your religion, your gender, your sexual orientation or preference, or any other uh, minority status that may be deemed unaccess unacceptable in the, middle, in the Muslim culture or religion. Moreover, the neighboring nations who do not offer any protections to their own Palestinian inhabitants are never targeted or called out for their mistreatment when Israel provides a lot of protections and aid to Palestinians in their borders. This disconnect is so distinct that sometimes it rattles my brain. How can people just be so blind? What is this fog that comes over their minds in the academic community, including the faculty, when it comes to objectively looking at the nation of Israel, the Jewish people as a whole, and these particular groups that target one or both? And it comes down, in my opinion, to spiritual warfare. Recently, we were studying Daniel 10 about how the messenger angel was, up, was held up for 21 days trying to get to Daniel with a message. And when he got there, he told Daniel, I heard your prayer from day, we heard your prayer from day one, and I was dispatched, but I was held up in a battle. And that the archangel Michael had to help with that battle. Now, of course, this story may seem supernatural and part of an ancient biblical text, but the fact of the matter is the reality of this 
haze and this warfare that spins around us, I think is part of the reason why in the academic community there's all this blindness to the truth when it comes to the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Intolerance and discrimination is so blatant and the one assigned one assigning events that may or may not be articulated correctly and then blaming Israel and seeking some sort of hatred towards it is what the BDS movement is garnering on these college campuses. Moreover, in Spain, various municipalities are starting to adopt BDS activities and sanctions within their organizations. Thankfully, the Supreme Court of Spain has ruled these as illegal and discriminatory. So that is a good step for the Spanish courts to say to the various municipalities you cannot adopt practices that discriminate against Jewish people or the nation of Israel. Only truth will set minds free. Articles reporting on the truth of activities and events in the Middle East cannot get buried on page 52 of Newsweek magazine. It has to be front and center. We need to use our own social media outlets to post and share articles that do reveal the truth about the Middle East and about Jewish people and the nation of Israel. We must also share news that we see where discrimination and anti-Semitism is happening in the West because this is not acceptable in a culture that is looking for diversity and tolerance and equal protection under the law. The fog and veil of liberalism and progressivism must be lifted as it's applied to BDS and their college groups on campuses. And only you and I can do that by praying and sharing the truth. It takes a constant evangelism of the truth in order to change minds and change the narrative. The Jewish people and the history of Israel and both together and the importance of it all to the Western world are all relying on our participation. God willing. Shavuot Tov, have a great week. Shabbat Shalom.